But now all these uh, bot accounts that are getting used, it's, it does go on. Oh yes, you can bet your bottom dollar it's going on, folks. You know, it's when a tweet gets put out by Eddie Hearn, a tweet goes out and uh, these bot accounts straight away, straight away these bot accounts, they, uh, got a battery missing, these bot accounts come out straight away and what they do what these accounts do, they end up agreeing with everything Eddie Earn does, and it, it's just a numbers game, isn't it? If you've got all these accounts that are doing that, it's a numbers game. Putting a tweet out and agreeing with Eddie, everything Eddie Earn says, it just makes it look good for the numbers, doesn't it? I mean, there's a lot of cheating going on. I mean, people just can't be honest, and a lot of these sponsors are being duped. It's a bit like. Connor, uh, Connor Ben's contract, isn't it? He's got a contract whereas if he gets a ranking with any governing body, a top 10 ranking, right, he gets, he gets bonuses and he gets another bonus for staying undefeated. If he's a top 10 fighter in a top, in, out of the four organisations, WBO, WBA, WBC, IBF, if Connor can get a top 10 ranking out of any of them and stay undefeated, he's going to get money off his sponsors, isn't he? JD Sports and other, other sponsors. Now, that's all very well, but Connor Ben's not even a top 25 guy, is he really? And he's not, has he not beat a guy yet who was top 50? So, this is why they're going to have to keep protecting him. Keep the money coming in and keep protecting his own. And that's what goes on. And th this is where Eddie Earn is bitching about social media and people being sad about it. And in, and in next breath, uh, he's, he's using it to manipulate. Listen, Eddie Earn has manipulated social media for 10 years. For 10 years he's manipulated it. 10 years! So, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? But please don't rock the boat. You know, that's what that's what people say to me sometimes. And I just say, listen, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I mean, people give that Ty and Boove a bit of stick, don't they? And a bit, what he says is a bit close to knuckle. Especially when he's putting pictures out of Down Syndrome teenage girls in the bras and that. Why would you want to put something like that on social media? But it's it's each to their own, and that's not my that's not my cup of tea. And I, I don't think he does it with any malicious in him. But I don't know him, do I? But everybody's got their own style, aren't they? That's not that's not me. That's not what I want to do. I just want to do talk boxing. I like to talk statistics. If people don't like what I say, you don't have to tune in. I'm not pressuring you. But if you do enjoy it. It means a lot to me, it touches my heart. Now, it really touches my heart and I've got some people on board at the moment helping out with channel and it's, I'm enjoying it and it's making it easier to do the channel. You know, I'm fortunate enough that my childhood friends, my business partner and, and the, her brother has given me an office. So, and I've got a gym up there that I don't even go to, which I should. So I'm fortunate, but the channel's going to take off as soon as I get off, off these tablets because my sleep pattern's messed up. So I can't seem to uh, get any, any into any rhythm with sleep pattern. And it looks at the moment like I'm not even interested in going up to that office, but I am. It's just that I don't like being on my own up there because I'm on my own all the time. And uh, I don't see anybody. If I go up there for eight hours, I'm just on my own. It's crap. So, but you know, life's crap, isn't it? But I should make I should make more of it because if you kick me out there, I'd be devastated because I'd feel like my bit of my identity is gone. But as long as I've got a camera in my car or a camera in my bedroom, I'm alright, aren't I? But I have to feel a bit crap. Feel crap today. I'm in bed at the moment. So, 
I've had a shower, I've gone back to bed. I hate Mondays, but it is what it is, isn't it? But, but now, uh, there's, there's people that are fraudulently conning fans with these bot accounts. And why would somebody go out with a way to do all that? Well, they're obviously paid for, aren't they? Because it's the same old bot accounts, isn't it? Now, and like I said, there's people on ticket deals. I wonder how many tickets were handed out for Joshua fights. I wonder how many tickets were handed out for Joshua fights that they never got no money for. And I wonder if, I'm wondering now if this Joshua bubble that they created one just wasn't as popular as what they're saying because they predicted 30,000 to go over to New York, didn't they? Well, they didn't even get 4,000, did they really? So, but it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is, isn't it? So, but it's one of them things. What can you do? I don't know. Well, what I'd like to say to see is I'd like to see Eddie Earn answer some questions that I'm going to give somebody else in the media now. I have given one person, I'm not going to mention his name, I've given a load of questions to one person in the media and he said, oh, I can't ask all them to Eddie all at once. I said, well, why not? He says, you see, I, he said, I'll just get drowned out. I said, he says, he's too slippery. So what would you do? He said, well, I can ask one at a time. You know, how many have you got? Is there just these five here? Or so I goes, no, there's actually 62 altogether. And he goes, oh, you're off your nut, you're crazy. I said, no, I want you to ask him. Em. You're supposed to be a mate. You're a mate, you're a mate of Dens. You've been there, you've been doing it years. He says, you just, I'm just not going to be able to ask him all. He won't put up with that. These people don't put up with that. Eddie's not daft. If Eddie's in trouble, he just goes silent. They're not giving the Dillian White thing any airtime, are they? They're just going to stay silent. It's just one of them things. But, uh, anyway. This is how I look at it, right? If I'm lying, go and look at the statistics, but... It's all fake, all this bot stuff, in it. It's all designed to get you £20 pay-per-view. These people don't care about the fans. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. Matchroom don't care about us. You know, they don't even care about the boxers. Go and ask Lee Purdy or Eric Oching. Go and ask them if they care about them. Go and ask Awara Davis. Hey, Go and ask him. Go ask Gavin Reese. Do you know what I mean? If I'm lying, go and look at the pay-per-view. For example, 2000 and... Go look at what's happening with pay-per-view. For example, entering 2009, the Eddie Earn era. We had... We just had Frotch Pascal on free-to-air TV. Fight like that, two undefeated guys going at it like cat and dog. Forward, three and a half year. We had Frotch Boote on Sky, non-pay-per-view. So things are still looking good, aren't we? And obviously by this stage, Eddie had already slipped. Eddie had already slipped a, 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 a pay-per-view in. <laughs> He'd already slipped Hey Harrison in and got his knuckles wrapped. And Sky had slipped Hey Vladimir in and they got the knuckles wrapped again. <laughs> hey? Forward seven year and 30 odd pay per views later from you know Hey Harrison all the way up to uh, Ruiz Joshua 2. You know, and we've got Chisora White, White Rivers, White Parker. I mean, now we've got KSI. I mean, it's craziness, isn't it? It's utter, utter craziness. And I don't know how much longer, how much longer can we, can we go, can, can this come out? How much longer can this go on for? I don't know, but have a look at these snooker shots for a minute. Let me know what you think. Yeah, 
be like them shots that you've just been looking at. Hardest oh, game it will. So frustrating snooker at times, but whatever gets me rocks off, I suppose, isn't it? Right, getting back to this pay per view. Listen, you've got to look at it like this. All these pay per views that we've had, right? Hey Harrison, if you count that as number one, up to Joshua, Ruiz rematch, Sky have had 34 pay per views. 34 pay per views from Hey Harrison up to Joshua Ruiz 2. Now, right, you know, Chisora White, White Rivers, White Parker. I was raging about White Parker, but it ended up a good fight, didn't it? Now we got KSI versus Logan Paul rematch on pay per view. Now, wages haven't gone up in this country, have they, hardly, in the last 10 years? But the Hearns are squeezing. They're squeezing the pound coin that much. The Queen's head is it looks like it's going to explode. The head on the coin looks like it's going to explode. They're squeezing it that hard. They're going to get their money, aren't they? The Hearns, no matter what. I don't have a problem with the Hearns. I quite like Barry Hearn actually. Old Bazza. Buzzing Baz we call him, because he's always buzzing. Now, as far as I'm concerned, they're abusing the pay-per-view system and I've got a problem with that. I'm not saying Eddie can't promote, the kid's born to do the job, isn't he? He's had it gifted him, hasn't he? He's born to do it, but like I've just said to you, The earns are milking it. And when Eddie Earn is asked about fans complaining about pay per view abuse, his reply is a simple Eddie, what do you think about the fans complaining and, and being critical about the Logan Paul KSI rematch being on Sky pay per view? What do you think, Eddie? Eddie Earn's reply was It makes me horny. So, Eddie Earn gets turned on by doing this. Anybody else would have said, well this is just how it's going and there's a market for it and if we don't do it somebody else is going to do it. Eddie Hearn doesn't say that. He just says, yeah I know, it makes me horny. You know, talking about things like that. The man's got no class has he? And yeah he does a 68 minute interview with Coogan. We're just trying to op open up a bit, talk about crisps and selling the wool glazing and things like that. Look, the man's had it on his lap all his life, hasn't he? He's been giving every giving everything all his life. When push comes to push, his arse will fall out, just like it did when he handed Mick Hennessy a date for Vladimir against Tyson Fury. Eddie Hearn tried to play a game of chess, didn't he? He ended up handing a date over. But none of his YouTube men. Well, we know who the YouTube men are, don't we? They weren't just Coogan. They weren't just Coogan out there promoting Eddie Hearn and Rob Tebbert and Michelle Phelps. You don't just got them free. They're the fortunate ones that have got sponsors so they can, so they can fly about. They're hard working though. It's an hard job. I couldn't do it. But no no there's other YouTubers that stay in the house all day. And uh big up everything Eddie and hammer anything Frank. But it is what it is, isn't it? These are these people they don't work in the boxing industry. They just do their YouTube channel, don't they, outside? That's what they do. They work it, they just do a YouTube channel, that's what they do. And tell everybody that they're loaded when they're not. They're doing it 
not showing the faces aren't they they're bigging everything up Eddie Eddie puts a puts a tweet out saying he's going to put Logan Paul on against KSI because it's going to help boxing moving forward these same YouTube people they come out and say it's going to help help grow boxing I mean, what, what planet are these people on do me a favour it's going to grow Eddie Earns bank balance Shannon Briggs and Paulie Malignaggi what have they become now what have they become they've become cheerleaders Spencer Oliver he's become a cheerleader hasn't he so what Eddie's done with his smugness he stood on the balcony of his Manhattan penthouse unzipped his flyer took out his small penis and took a pee and all the fans outside the window outside his penthouse does he care? no does he care about money? yes has he even so much as said it's how it's going boxing now no it's like a politician he's out of touch with the man in the street and uh, that's basically it really look Eddie lives in a Eddie lives in a Georgian mansion doesn't he? Charles the Rolls Royce with EH 79 on year we were born you know he's an hard worker nobody's saying he's not an hard worker but he could have put white rivers on non-pay-per-view and given something back to the fans couldn't he but he hasn't has he so flies everywhere first class you know he's out of touch with the fans politicians are out of touch with fans you do know that don't you politicians are out of touch with the country you know that they're, they're sanctioning people for I was talking to somebody a couple of days ago about this how are you doing nothing new for years so I'm on a downer porky I've been sanctioned I've got a missus and kids and that you know so I put him in touch with somebody who might be able to get him a job but he uh, he said the politicians are out of touch I said yeah just like Eddie and he's out of touch with what boxing fans want boxing fans want to see a couple of good shows on now don't we that's non-pay-per-view I mean that one at weekend were all right wasn't it that want pay-per-view Eddie would have put that on pay-per-view wouldn't he it want pay-per-view we want it want best defense for Josh Wannett and what it we want pay-per-view but I just think that I think Eddie's now, are now out of touch but uh, and I think the fans all vote with their feet just like they did AJ look the fans got fed up with Anthony Joshua didn't they they got fed up and when fans get fed up what they do they vote with their feet Rocky what are you doing what are you over there come here okay all right fans vote with their feet right that's what they do they'll vote with their feet now I don't expect Joshua to take an army over to Saudi because most people I speak to they're frightened to death to go but Ern will know all this he will know all this there's a team behind him he's just the front man isn't he he's the mouthpiece he'll have a team behind him pointing out things about numbers and I can assure you they'll be worried now with Joshua on slide and I dare say after Usyk just fought Chad, Chaz Witherspoon and he didn't put a brilliant performance in did he he should really be blowing him away shouldn't he Chaz Witherspoon and making a making a statement now that didn't happen did it so what you're going to get now is you're going to probably get Usyk 
It's probably going to be thrown at Wilder. They want Wilder beaten, don't they? For Joshua and Eddie to rule again, they've got to get rid of Wilder. Wilder and Usyk at the same weight. In fact, Usyk's even heavier. So, all this about Usyk's not big enough and all that. I'm not buying it, but he's got to perform better than he did against Chaz Witherspoon if he's going to move forward. A guy who does seven fights in eight years or ten fights in nine years or something, I don't know. He'd not been very active, had he Chaz Witherspoon. But, now I know for a fact though, like I said, the Joshua numbers are down. Joshua's. I think they've got to a certain stage with Joshua and they didn't know how to do the old crossover, did they? He never turned into Michael Jordan, did he? Do you know why? They were, say they were saying... They were saying that Joshua's like Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, LeBron James. It didn't work out like that, did it? I when you're great, you come back from greatness. Joshua might come back, blow her a wheeze away in one round, and it'll all be forgot about, won't it? But it won't be, will it? Because he didn't just get beat by like Lennox Lewis did with one punch. That didn't happen, did it? What happened were he got took apart, he got broke down, didn't he? by a quicker guy who could punch just as much and who had a good chin now he had a good beard on him didn't he now when the numbers didn't add up they went to New York didn't they they had to go to New York the AJ bubble had burst Wembley dates Cardiff dates all gone now they're all gone now folks I'm afraid unless you can get Fury to sign for matchroom and who knows, you never know what's around the corner, do you? Her needs Fury now more than ever. He needs him. So expect Hearn to start flirting in the, ne in the coming months. I said it ages ago. I said it ages ago. Which brings me to drug cheats. Gerald Miller. I said he would be back with Hearn within a year. Was I right? Well, it's only been six months, hasn't it, since Gerald Miller got caught. Did he get caught end of April? Something like that. It's only been six months. Already he's talking about Gerald Miller coming back into the fold. If he brings Jarrell Miller back into the fold, we might as well all pack up and go to something else, haven't we? Do you know what I mean? Jarrell Miller, his best wins Thomas Adamek, 42 year old light heavyweight. That's his best win, Thomas Adamek. Throws a lot of punches. He's been done in, but it K2 or MMA, failed a drug test in that. And he's just failed for four different substances before the Joshua fight, so he got kicked off. But how come Eddie never let Jarrell Miller fight and not tell Joshua? Oh, they told Joshua, oh, he's failed the drug test. Do you know how serious that could be, Eddie Hearn said? This guy here has failed the drug test. And he knew that he'd done it. Now all the screaming and everything that they said. And look what happened. Crazy, isn't it? Look what happened. Usex just fought on a we at weekend, and last week Spong failed a drug test. So they slipped in Chaz Witherspoon, didn't they? But yet they told Usex about the opponent failing the drug test. But they didn't tell. They didn't tell. 
Oscar Rivers did they that Dillian White had failed the test did they? No 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 they kept it hushed didn't they? And if Thomas Hauser had not come out and told the fans we wouldn't have got to know would we? Hey, we wouldn't have got to know except now they're in a bit of a dilemma aren't they now? I mean how many other times has this happened? Has Joshua ever failed a test? Has Tony Bell you ever failed a test? We don't know, do we? We don't know. Tyson Fury failed one and they nearly got off with it. Well, they did get off with it, didn't they? Because it came out at a later date, didn't it? What else is, are we not knowing about all these drug tests? And all seems a bit shady to me. And I think Eddie Earn wants his cake and eats it. If you fail a drug test and you were a match and fighter, is going to sweep it away under, under the carpet but if you're fighting if you're not a match on fighter when you fail one he's going to scream it to everybody like he did when Canelo for, tested positive you know it, it's just craziness they want the cake and they, they're going to eat it now to be fair to match them they are big on drug testing the only person to ever fail on a test before were Kenny Anderson after when he fought Robin Reed. Kenny failed for amphetamine, didn't he, after the fight? So Kenny Anderson failed, but they never told Robin Reed about it, though, did they? Why? Because Robin wanted a match room fight, was he? He were no good to him, was he? If Luke Campbell, or Joshua, or Kel Brook, or any of them, fought somebody who failed a drug test, Eddie would be on it like a rash. You can't manipulate the system. He upset Robin Reed with what he did years ago. We're keeping that from them. The border control knew, but Robin Reed didn't get to know, did he? Robin Reed didn't get to know for months about Kenny Anderson's test, and that's wrong. Eddie, you were wrong there. Rivers didn't get to know. If it wasn't him for Thomas Hauser, Rivers wouldn't have known, would he? Rivers was fought Dillian White in a fight where Dillian White's failed the dope test. I mean, how mad is that? They're doing what they want and nobody's making a stand except me and a few others. A few other hardcores, guys like you folks that are listening. That I'm very grateful that you're listening. Guys like world record breaking fighter, world breaking fighter and uh, Adonis from Texas. How are you doing Adonis? Shout out Adonis. He's got a YouTube channel, world breaker fighting. I've been a guest on there, enjoyed it. He's on Twitter but... Not many of us are making a stand. The boxing asylum lads are. Rico and Terry from Ifield Boxing. New Age Pod are. Not, not many others aren't. We've got other YouTube channels and they know who they are. We know who these other YouTube channels are. That are uh, defending it all and all that. What is there to defend? You're peeing a cup and it comes up for a, do a, some, a, a dodgy. They split the cup into two test tubes. And they go to two different agencies. One's kept on shelf in case it's needed. The first one's tested. But it's the same urine, isn't it? So where's the where's the u where's this B sample? The B sample is the A sample, it's from the same cup. So come on Eddie, play the game. Play the white man. But it is what it is, isn't it? But I don't know, but moving on, moving on. I'll put you in a couple of snooker shots in here to break it up a little bit. <sighs> Mate, that's me done. Come on. I'm going for a pint of orange. Thank you. 
Now then, Kelbrook against Amir Khan. Is it a good fight? Yeah, it's a good fight. Is it a good fight now? Yeah, I suppose it is, yeah, but Amir's, Amir's on slide, isn't he? And you'd say Kel's on slide. They've been to the top at Mountain and they're on the way down, aren't they? But Amir's on his way down and he likes a pound note and he's getting as much money in as he can. Kel Brook, he's been badly managed, he's got bad advisors around him and you know he's, he's trained by he's worked with Ingalls, Colwell, then back to Ingalls uh, who else? John Fuchs and then back to Ingalls so he's a tortured soul in he Kel uh, I don't think Anybody can teach him anything at his age now. I think it's just a case of keeping him motivated. Uh, so, I don't know what's going on there. But, I'm a little bit disappointed at how, how he's treated uh, our guy, John Fuchs. I, th I felt that, you know, that the guy that if he beat were a good guy. I mean, he's just beat Jeff Horn, hasn't he? So... So as far as I'm concerned, you know, Kel Brook, Kel Brook can, should have treated John Fuchs a bit better, but the Kel Brook, the curious case of Kel Brook, right, this is how I look at it, right, with Kel Brook, he's a masterful boxer, Kel, you know, masterful, but this is how I look at it. Kel is, I don't think he's mentally as strong as some other world champions that we've had. I think he has a streak in him where he can just go and do what he wants. I mean, he's sat at number eight on BoxRec as a super welterweight. You know, 38 and 2, he's 33 years of age now, Kel. 33 year old, he's 34, you know, in, he's 34 in, in spring, so, get Christmas out of that way, Kel's not going to fight now, is he, this year, I don't think, I'd be surprised if he did, I'd be, be very surprised, <clears throat> I think he'll write 2019 off, and come back 2020, but, when you're 34, trying to do it at that age, it's not the same as it. Why on earth Kel Brook was in a fight with Gennady Golovkin? Only Kel Brook knows. But, like I said, the guy who beat Manny Pacquiao, Jeff Horn, Well, he uh, he he lost to uh, Michael Serafa. Now, if my memory serves me correct, didn't Kel Brook get a lot of stick for fighting Michael Serafa? He got a lot of stick, didn't he? Why though? Why would he get a stick for fighting a guy like that? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And uh, I'm disappointed. But, because the guy you were fighting was no mug whatsoever. And it's proved. And it's proved you've only got to look at his record. He's 27 and free, right? 27 and free, and he's 27 years of age. He's ranked number seven in the world. Do you know what I mean? He's ranked number seven in the world, and he's stepped up to middleweight now. But, as I've said, the guy has beat Jeff Horn. And Jeff Horn 
beat Manny Pacquiao. Now in 2017, forward two year. Forward 25 months. Forward 25 months and 29 days. And Michael Serafa has beat Jeff Horn, the man who beat Manny Pacquiao for the world welterweight title. Unbelievable, isn't it? That is unbelievable. Well, what can you do? It's uh, it's one of them things. Obviously, you know he's got his belt. He's I mean Gary Kakoran shouldn't have even been in arena. They might not ring with him for his first defence. He beat him. <clears throat> stopped him and then obviously he's got him with Terence Crawford and he's got knocked out and he in Vegas but he got his payday didn't he he's then lost to Mundane and uh, sorry he's then beat Mundane and then lost to Serafa but you know Kel Brook neither got him out of there early so I don't know what the problem is with people John Fuchs as an up and coming trainer what he's done as head trainer at Dennis Hobson's gym is amazing. He's built up an amateur stable now that's going to be one of the best in the area. Now people should get behind John instead of Dominic Ingle running around sticking knife in every two minutes, saying that John Fuchs is a glorified pad man and blah de blah. He's been around fighting all his life, John Fuchs. He also happens to be my pal, but pals aside. He's actually alright, he takes me on pads when I go up there. So, yeah, old pork is not bad on pads. I like to get a bit of a whack and that. And, uh, you know, it's alright if you can do it with somebody you trust. And I trust John. Uh, a load of leg pullers up there, but. But no, I feel a little bit. Uh, I feel a little bit. What's the word? I'm disappointed with Cal Brook doing that, but I'm disappointed. But you know, you look at Cal Brook's career, and what what has he? Uh, where's he going at the moment, Cal? I mean, he's a great fighter, Cal Brook. Don't get me wrong, but where where's he going at the moment? Where is Cal Brook going? I don't know where he's going. Uh, let's have a look how many world champions he's beat. Right. Well, Kel Brooks, last world champion that he beat was Sean Porter in 2014. So we're five year, two month on, and he's not beat a world champion. Right. Not beat a world champion at all. Uh, so before Porter. He'd beat Senchenko, I went to that fight, that's two he's beat. Uh, is Hector David Saldivia, is he a world champion? Let's have a look. No, I don't think he were, worry. No, I don't think he were a world champion. Uh, so I don't know. That's two. I don't. Th uh, Matthew Atten weren't. Love more and do. I think he were a world champion. Three. Is that all his beat? Cal, I'm sure he's beat more than him. I'm sure there's a couple more. So Kel's not really got the names on his record, has he? Really? Do you know what I mean? It's like a, a could have been, isn't it? He's already been there, but it's like he could have done a lot better, couldn't he? Really? I think so. Has he won a European title, Kel? Let's have a look. So it's disappointing. It's disappointing. That Kel's still chasing the Amir Khan fight. Now, Amir Khan never gave, sorry, Ricky Atten never gave Witter the chance. 
and I don't think Amir's gonna give Kel the chance. I think that's just how it goes, isn't it? It's just, it's just sometimes that's how boxing goes, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's it's a shame, but Kel's th coming up 34, and you know it's not good. It's not good at all, but. I just feel for him, and of course Amir Khan, well, Amir Khan just keeps banking money after money after money, doesn't he Amir Khan, it's just, I don't know, <clears throat> Amir Khan, right, he's probably the Dave Allen of the, of the top elite, you know, he's very shrewd, he's very, very shrewd, Amir Khan, how, how he's working it. Amir Khan's ranked number 10 on BoxRec, he's still in the mix, he's still in the mix, age 32, 34 and 5, he's been knocked out four times, he's just beat Billy Dib. now, he's just beat Billy the Kid Dib. but uh Will Billy Dib go down as one of his best wins? No, I don't think he will. I don't think he will. But, uh, well, like I said, Amir's just beat Billy Dib, and you can only beat what those in front of you, can't you? You know, and he's a uh, international box. He's a world, former world featherweight champion, uh, international boxing federation world feather title. Yeah, so, you know, it's one of them things, isn't it? Uh, so, Billy J, but Amir Khan's beat 11 world champions, and now he's, but he's got more world champions beat than Frotch. So, vacant world boxing council, international welterweight title. How did they, how did they pull that off? So... Amir Khan's gonna go down as an all-time great, isn't he? He's beat more world champions than the Cobra. I'm devastated about that now. Devastated. But Amir Khan's also been iced four times, hasn't he? Uh, so, will it happen? I don't know. Do I care? No. Is it worth pay-per-view? No. It'd be a great Saturday night non-pay-per-view fight, wouldn't it? It's been talked about that long. That every 12 months they wheel out Johnny Nelson and Adam Smith don't let's talk about it but I think even they're fed up of it now aren't they it's all gone quiet again hasn't it so anyway moving on to better things than that here's a couple of snooker shots for you Hope you enjoyed them. Right, Josh Whale. I'm interested in fighters that want to fight people. People that are respectful, people that are easy to work with, hard trainers, people that text me and say, how are you doing Ross? And I say, I'm alright. They want to know how I am. How are you doing? I'm alright. How's your family? My family's alright. How are you? Are you alright? That sort of, them sort of people I'm interested in. Now I'm interested in good honest boxing people like Josh Whale and his dad Mick. Now everybody knows I signed them for, for Dennis. I always go on about it. <laughs> Josh and Mick Whale go about their business properly. They're proper men aren't they? Proper people, proper boxing people like Jimmy Tibbs and his dad Mark and, and his son Mark Tibbs sorry. They're proper boxing people. Dennis always says to me, I said Dennis I've got an interview with Jimmy Tibbs, what do you reckon? And he said, proper, they're proper people, them Russ. I said, you reckon I'll be alright, Dennis, going down to London? 
down there because yeah you'll be all right we'll look after you brilliant people brilliant same as whale family they've been brilliant with me josh and brilliant with me josh and mick brilliant they just go about the business dead easy they're easy to work with they keep their part at bargain our office at the moment up there is flying and jim it's flying Fuki's got the gym flying, the officer's flying, Michelle's working hard, we, you know, there's people helping Michelle up there now, it's teamwork, we'll move forward, obviously Dennis has, his mum and dad have both died now, so he's got bit between his teeth and there's, you know, he's he's got Steve Crump with him now and Steve Ailing, there's things that are happening behind the scenes, it's all exciting times, it's all exciting as Mr Bean says. Exciting times ahead Johnny, yes Adam, this is why we love this sport so much. Yeah we do Adam, we love the sport so much, but you do as well don't you Adam? You will love it Adam, don't you? Hey, on 800 grand a year, you will love it. Having your hand Johnny there on 500k a year with your hands in biscuit barrel. Of course they're going to love it, they've had their hands out all their life them haven't they? Adam Smith's never thrown a punch in his life but he owns half of, half of London. So but Josh and Mick Whale they go about their business and they're proper people, they're people that I want to do boxing business with. Do you know what I mean? They're people that I like to ring up and say we're meeting for a cup of tea at a cafe or are, we, are, we, are you coming out for a cuppa? Proper boxing people, you can sit there with a cuppa, you can get laptop out and you can go through box and we can say what about him, what about this, what about him if he comes up a weight or him if he comes down a weight or what about him, it's good people who you can bounce ideas off, that's what you've got to have, that's what you've got to have, the old school, Josh Wales dad mate, he did his training with Chris Smedley, they went, they joined together, didn't they, with the licences back in the day. Mick probably had a mullet then and a Ford Capri, didn't you, Mick? Oh, Terry McCann. Terry McCann, Mick, with his Capri. Probably working outdoors as well, old minder. <laughs> but uh, Chris probably had the same van that he were doing tiling in. <laughs> Good boxing people. Like I said, Jim's flying up there. Dennis at Obson Fight Academy, Jim, he's got it flying. And uh, Fuki's got it got it going well up there. Uh, like I said, I'm gutted Fuki's not with Kel Brook. Because yeah, there's, there's been a few people joined Jim because he was training Kel, but what can you do? It's one of them things, in it. But who cares, anyway? It's one of them things, in it. Who, does anybody care about Kel Brook anymore? I do, but I'm losing my patience. But will Kel fight again? Like I said, who cares? He yesterday's his man, in he? His stepdad Terry has said that much and handled Kel that badly that they can't go back to Frank now, can they? How can they go back to Frank Warren, Warren now after everything that's been said? Do you know what I mean? That's why I'm a little bit disappointed with Dave Allen. You know, going running up to that lead show and hanging out at the back of Frank Warren. You know, after uh, after what's gone on in the past, it's uh, like I said, they've got no scruples, have they? You know what I mean? No scruples. Look at David A. Though we don't Tony Bell you. They tell us one thing, and next minute they're all laughing and joking and cuddling. And then when there's a rematch on, they go back to hating each other and cuddling af after. Would you oblige me? David, will you oblige me? Hey. Do you know what I mean? But. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people have asked me. Uh, oh, I'm just finished this off here, Kel. You know, they can't, as far as I'm concerned, Kel Brook. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Kel Brook can't go back to Frank Warren. And. Uh, He's got two choices where he can go now, Kelbro. He can either stay with Eddie Earn and be treated like he's being treated as an afterthought, or he can go with Al Heyman. 
and Al Heyman will probably put him in with Eubank at middleweight or something. They're not going to respect Kel now, are they? Because Kel's just desperate for a payday now, and he just wants one more. He just wants to go to the the well one more time. And I worry for Kelbrook. I worry about Kelbrook if he's not going to box. What will happen to him? Because the fantastic technician of a fighter, in my opinion, he's the best fighter to come out of Ingalls gym after Ryan Rhodes. Technically, Ryan Rhodes is the best man up there. He's the man with the skills to come out of that gym. Then Kelbrook. Then Bomber Graham. He didn't have full package bomber and he couldn't punch, could he? he? had an horrible style. Johnny Nelson's its worst style I've ever seen out of Ingle Jim. Johnny Nelson's and Daniel Thorpe, they're not the same level. But I wish Kel Brook all the best. I think he's a fantastic technician, but I think he's missed the boat now. He made bad decisions. Uh, he made some bad decisions at the wrong time in his life. And like I said, I think he'll live to regret that, Kelbro. In box rec number eight, as a super welterweight, and he's not fought since 8th of December last year. So he's ten and a half months without a fight. And he's, he's going around with Dominic Ingle with begging ball out. So that'll be Dominic pushing that, not Kel. Dominic will be driving force from that. They love pound notes, don't they, them boys? But, I wish him well. One thing about Dominic, he will get his fighters into shape. But what happens if Dominic Ingalls' fighters fail one more drug test? Will we get to know about it? I wonder. I wonder, but he's not done bad, Dominic, as a trainer, has he? Kid Galahad's a good fighter, isn't he? He's not there to be it, but who'd want to see Kid Galahad Warrington? It's a dog with fleas, isn't it? But uh, somebody has emailed me, Rock Porky, what's happening with your sporting icons interview? Well, I decided I didn't want to interview him on my channel for two reasons. I don't know what he looks like. And the other reason is, he was chatting shit about me to someone in industry who's uh, close to a friend of mine and it got back to me. I even ended up seeing a few screenshots of what he said. So, that's that, so, so that's that, he rung and told me and he sent me a screenshot, so I blocked him on Twitter, I'm not saying he's a good boxing person, he's obviously dedicated, but I don't suffer fools gladly with people who go behind me back, so it is what it is isn't it, I'm, I don't, listen, me and him were never going to be mates were we, but we did end up having a few texts and I kind of figured that we might end up talking on channel but then he went and did that didn't he so I can't have somebody that's two faced. I'd rather him text me and say you're a, you're a whatever an F-U-C-K-C-U-N-T but not when they're going to do that so I've no time for double agents, people who hide behind cameras. So people can say yeah but Ultra Tech Sports Raw. He, he hides behind his camera, no, ultra done. I know people that know Ultra Tech and he's sound, alright? I know people in Frank Warren's organisation that know him and he is mustard, he's one of your own ultra. And the reason he does it is because he says there's loads of nutters out there, so fair play to him. But the other guy's not saying that, is he? Do you know what I mean? So, you put yourself out there, you've got to take it on the chin, haven't you? I ain't got no against him. Apart from the fact that you know he bigs up everything Eddie Earn does, uh, he hasn't asked anybody about the B sample with why. I had a little look at his channel actually. He's got a really good boxing knowledge, but I don't like how he goes about his business, so I don't want him on my channel. So if I said I were going to have him on, well, I'm not now. He's spoilt it for himself. But I wish him all the best because. We need more people like sporting icons in the boxing industry. So, alright, but I'm not slagging him, but I don't want to be associated with people that are going to be nice to me in direct messages and then obviously say bad shit about me. I'm not going to have that. So, but it's one of them things, in it? So he's blocked. Along with Sonny Edwards, 
who I like a lot. I like his boxing style, but I got I was trying to big Sonny's weight division up the other day on here, and then he's uh, uh, so 